Welcome back to Wicked Classic Cars. Today we have another Fiat Dino. This is an earlier model, a 1967. The Fiat Dino is a two-seater Spider uh, with a Ferrari V6 in it and some Ferrari body styling and the uh, typical Dino wheels and a fantastic looking interior for the 60s. Um, this is a great little car. There's only 600 of this model, and then the other Fiat Dino 2400 I did, there were only 400 of those ever made. What are the odds that we got two of these? Uh, pretty good, because all these guys know each other. So this was a referral from the last guy. And I'm super excited to work on another one of these, especially since it's a little bit different than the others. Um, this has the uh, 2.0 V6, a five-speed manual transmission, uh, and about 158 horsepower, which for a tiny two-seater convertible, I'd say is pretty good. I don't imagine it weighs very much. Um, and again, these cars are incredibly rare. So today we're here to do some paint correction. We're gonna do a two-step correction on this car and get rid of all these scroll marks or as much as we can on this older paint finish. Uh, it is a single stage paint, but it does seem to have quite a bit of paint on it, although the readings are all over the place on the paint depth gauge. Uh, I try to always have this with me when I work on classics, just so I can make sure we have enough to work with and we know uh, where we can go and how far we can go with it. did a little pass test spot. Here's before and here's after. That's using uh, McGuire's microfiber pad and Shine Supply Classic Cut. It did leave it rather hazy, uh, but we took out majority of the defects uh, for single stage paint. On single stage paint cars, you can't always get everything out, and you should not try to be a superhero about it or you could end up burning the paint. Uh, this car was definitely repainted, but it was probably painted in the uh, 80s or 90s, and so they just kind of imitated the old style paint. Um, so my pads are turning bright red and collecting a lot of paint in them, which means you really have to switch them out frequently if you're not like thoroughly cleaning them at the time, and then I'm gonna have to clean them right away when I get home so that that paint doesn't just stick on there. But these pads are gonna probably forever be red, um, although they'll be usable again. While we're down here, I'm just gonna hit this chrome a little bit. Uh, with my pad because I'm about to switch pads anyway. So I'm going to polish up the chrome a bit just to shine it up so it looks real good uh, on this old little car. So while we were working on this car, we discovered that on this paint finish, uh, less was more. When we kept trying to just kind of hammer down, it would just get hazier and hazier, but if we went <laughs> really lightly on it, uh, there would be a minimal amount of micro marring and it would actually get rid of a lot of defects. Uh, these doors were pretty hard to get. There's not much room between that door handle and the window, and we definitely were not taking off the door handles on this old car. before and after on the door. It's looking really clear. This is gonna be a major difference to the customer. 
This is another one of those cars that's so low to the ground uh, in order to see up at the panel so I could tell how many swirl marks and defects I was removing, I had to uh, lay on the floor again. So, got a little dirty working on this car today, plus with the red dust flying everywhere uh, from there being paint and compound uh, on my pads. Doing stuff like this is what makes this job so laborsome. So a lot of people don't understand how much effort we really put into doing this and what we have to do to our bodies uh, in order to make your cars look pretty and get rid of all those swirl marks. It took quite a bit of compounding to remove everything on the store. It looked really nice upon completion, uh, and now we have to hit that under area under the side skirt, which is super messed up and has this white paint stuff that appears uh, that's all down the side that I'll have to remove with a polisher. Spend a little more time on the floor here, uh, but this side skirt cleans up pretty easily, and I'm able to eliminate uh, all of the white paint residue or whatever grime this was on the lower half of the car. But yeah, although as you see I'm kind of hovering in one spot and working the polisher. Uh, those are the areas where I was trying to work the, the uh, whatever substance was on there off. This is basically what you can expect from working on a single stage paint job car. Whatever color it is, your pads will be that color as well. But as you can see, all the paint is still there and it's looking pretty fresh. For our final polishing step, we ended up going with the Meguiar's Microfiber Finishing Pad and a little drop of Classic Polish. This actually finished out this paint really nicely and eliminated all of the DA haze uh, that had been left behind from the aggressive compounding. So, nice little combo here. Sometimes these finishing microfiber pads really do the trick. Here's a before and after of haze to no haze. Or no haze to haze, sorry. old single stage paint now has an incredible finish on it. You can see a little uh, before and after there, going from uh, after over to where it wasn't uh, polished yet. Uh, so we finished the whole car really quickly and then I'm just gonna jump into some of the little details here. I'm gonna polish the rest of the chrome. I brought out the uh, three inch this time because I'm also gonna polish the headlights on this car and uh, shine them up a little bit. Some of these classic car headlights, it's tough to see if you actually made a difference or not, but I like to think that we're at least removing all the 
oxidation and uh, preventing it from turning colors or getting dim in the future. really nice after being polished. Uh, I do this carefully because it always feels sketchy when you're polishing these little mirrors on some of these cars because they're almost always loose. Then I'll move on to my panel prep stage. Since this is a single stage, super sensitive paint, I'm gonna use my uh, alcohol mix here instead of using Fine Lab panel prep. Just cleaned everything up nicely, got all the oils off the surface, and uh, did not bring back any marring or anything like that. Most of our services include a good uh, vacuum and wipe down inside, so we're given this Fino. Uh, a nice little cleaning. The interior was already pretty clean. It seems the owner is a very clean person, so uh, it didn't take too long to vacuum out. Today we're installing Fine Lab Ceramic V2 on this car. Uh, I wasn't sure upon arrival whether it was going to be a single stage paint or not. Uh, usually Fine Lab recommends using their hydro coating, uh, but I've had pretty good luck with uh, ceramic and ceramic light on some of the single stage paint jobs uh, in the past. So we're going to wipe this on and uh, wipe it right off. This stuff is pretty forgiving and easy to use. Just wait till it flashes a little bit and begin your wipe off. If you're using the right towels, uh, these coatings wipe off fairly easily. Most of Fine Lab stuff is super forgiving, so even if you forget about it for a little while, you can come back and wipe it off generally. I find that the fluffy towels I use work amazing for wiping coatings off. This is what it looks like uh, on the paint. You can see a little hazy and you kind of wait till it's flashed uh, or sweating a little bit and then you start to wipe it off and it wipes off uh, like butter. Uh, this is super easy coating to use. This stuff is rated for about three years uh, and it's super hydrophobic especially since they put out V2 uh, which like basically kind of has a built-in top coat so it's much better and you don't always need to put one of the fine lab top coats on top afterwards you can just get away with it. I'm also going to apply it to the chrome and the headlights and these little fog lights as well. I'm not entirely sure how well this stuff holds up on chrome and plastics, but I imagine you probably get at least 6 to 12 months out of uh, non-clear coated surfaces with it. I think the chrome on this car looks great. This is the time uh, era when chrome should be on cars. It does not look good on new cars, but on these old ones, it looks awesome. And I love getting the chrome looking really nice because that's like the, the icing on the cake after you totally restored someone's paint. It just really pops in the sun. Uh, and it looks perfect on this little Fiat front end. Even in the 60s, manufacturers gave a big F.U. to uh, detailers and said, let's put a grill that's impossible to clean. 
I didn't want to leave this grill uh, looking haggard with this nice detail this guy paid for, so we went through and just kind of fingered it a little bit and uh, got everything out. It was pretty worn though from the ages, so it doesn't look perfect, but it didn't have dirt all over it anymore. Else. Of course, we can't forget the windows. These get covered in compound dust throughout the procedure, so we are giving these a good wipe down uh, before we get out of here. So, this is looking pretty good with the ceramic coating on it. It's just uh, missing a tire dressing, so we're going to apply the Fine Lab Velvet Tire Sealant uh, onto these tires. Fine Lab Velvet Tire Sealant is a new uh, tire coating from Fine Lab. It is available to the consumer for about $15.99 and it's rated to last two to six months on your tires uh, under proper care and conditions. So just like with any other tire dressing, you want to prep the tire, make sure uh, that when you wipe it off that your towel comes up clean. These, towel, these uh, tires were fairly new, so they did clean up pretty quickly. Uh, I'm using Shine Supply Solution All-Purpose Cleaner in order to do this. Uh, I recommend All-Purpose Cleaner or uh, like the Shine Supply Wise Guy Tire Cleaner. Just keep going until no brown or black comes up. That way you get the best longevity out of your tire. apply the velvet tire sealant, you then uh, put a good amount on your applicator and I'm using a, an old microfiber applicator that has already been used for coating. Uh, and you wipe on a good solid layer of product, it's going to look really wet and that's okay. And then immediately after, if you don't fumble it like I did, uh, you're going to put a second layer on. Uh, and this is more than likely just to ensure that you as the consumer get full coverage on the tire and didn't miss any spots. So I'll go through this sequence one more time here and uh, thoroughly clean and then dress the tire with two coats. This stuff looks really nice when it's done. It takes about 10 minutes to dry, uh, so don't drive anywhere for at least 10 minutes. So if it's really cold out, probably let it sit a little bit longer than that. Uh, and I'm eager to see if this lasts those two to six months. The, we did a video on this with the Land Rover Defender last week, uh, and that's the car I see regularly, so we're gonna see how long it holds up on there. Um, it's a water-based uh, tire sealant, and it provides excellent protection to your tires. Do a little walk around here uh, up close with the light you can kind of see the results we got it is a major improvement as we talked about though it's not perfect because it is a classic car and it's got some sketchy paint on here so i'm not trying to cause any damage uh, there's no need to be the biggest baddest paint correctionist around because if you're burning everybody's paint or making it so they can never get it polished again you're not a very good detailer so thank you for watching this is another uh great car that we've done here i hope i get a few more of these and uh, make sure you hit subscribe and give it a thumbs up if you liked it we appreciate all your support uh, don't forget we release content monday wednesday friday at 12 p.m pacific time i know it's the holidays and y'all are going to be pretty busy but please try to stay on top and watch catch you next time